Bank of USC Unleash the Beast and want the inside scoop on this game and all things Trojans, be sure to sign up for the three torches presented by Smart and Final. It's a free newsletter that'll hit your email inbox three times a week with game info, player insights, and more. Go to usctrojans.com slash three torches and sign up. Back on Trojans Live, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, and we are joined uh, by the new linebackers coach, Matt Ansa. Coach, uh, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we are, we're all very excited to, to get you. It seemed like a real coup because you are a big-time accomplished head coach uh, in, in, in of yourself, a two-time FCS national champion head coach. What was it? What was the ultimate uh, factor that, that got you to USC here to, uh, to be an assistant? Well, I think the first thing was just the brand. Uh, you know, USC kind of, to me, it's one of the, the top two or three blue blood programs in the country. And so I have an opportunity to work at a place where – there's all the resources that's available. Didn't really know Coach Riley, but through the process, just having an opportunity to have some conversations with him, I really appreciated kind of what his vision was, what he wanted to do, and uh, realized that there was great people here. And I, I think the combination of those two things, and then uh, probably a little competitiveness myself, wanting to continue to climb the, the professional ladder. Coach, what's it be a couple weeks here now into spring ball? Uh, what's it been like working with Coach Lentz and all the new coaches in your defensive uh, meeting room? It's been good. Uh, you know, I think going back to early January when we all kind of finally got our feet on the ground here in Southern California, it, it's been very positive since then. Uh, we got a, a, a tremendous defensive staff, a lot of uh, very successful uh, men in there that have, you know, been multiple spots along the way, have won a ton of ball games and done it differently everywhere we've been. The one thing that I'll say is it's a very humble group. Uh, everyone's here to pour into the players, continue to get them better, to continue to elevate, you know, our pro and it, elevate our play, but also attack our process. And that's one thing that I think Coach Lynn has done a really good job of is establishing what it looks like for install, repetition, repetition, kind of install things, whole part, whole. And so our kids have a pretty good understanding. We've, we've thrown a lot at them this first spring. We need to because we want to have film of everything. And they've done a good job. And, and, and I give him a lot of credit because of just the style of teaching and how he wants to go about doing that. Yeah, it feels like the that comment about the install and what Coach Lynn's doing, Coach, Coach Riley's referenced that on a couple interviews too, is has the install process with Coach Lynn been similar to what you've been used to in the past or what makes it so unique that that specific talking point continues to, to come up? Well, I think it's similar to what, what we've done or what I've, what I've been involved with, but I think it's, it's probably atypical for what our, our players here have been used to. The thing we've, we have, like when we walk through, like tonight, there was three different walkthroughs going on at once, and so everyone is involved. Uh, there is no place to hide out or just to kind of listen. And then every, you know, maybe five, seven minutes we rotate, and so you'll go from a, a pressure walkthrough to uh, uh, maybe a formation adjustment to another pressure walkthrough. And so just repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, our goal is, you know, we got to be able to do it. We have to do it enough until we can't get it wrong. And so that's, that's kind of the mentality right now is we're going to make sure we get plenty of reps in these walkthroughs so that way on practice days we're, we're seeing it emulating perfection or getting closer to what we're, what we're looking for. You're listening to USC linebackers coach Matt Entz on Trojans Live. And, and coach, uh, you know, I'm wondering – what perspective did you learn from being a head coach that now you take, you know, to, to be in a position coach that, you know, that, that you've been in that big seat? Uh, what, 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 what did you learn from it? Well, you know, when, when you're the head football coach, you worry about everyone and everything. Um, you know, you are, you know, the ultimate vision. You're, you're, you create the goals. You create the, you know, where we're going, how we're going. You kind of steer the ship. Um, as a position coach, I, I get to steer my own little ship, but it's my position room. And, you know, there's 10 guys versus 150 people and 50, 60, you know, operation people that are yeah. tied to it. And so I've, I've joked with him a little bit when, when there's those moments, those head coaching moments, I'll kind of give him a point and a smile and say, hey, this is on you now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I'm going to go worry about some run fits or something that, you know, is, is much, much less taxing. You know, but one of the things sometimes as a, as a head football coach and in this, you know, landscape of college football, you're moving farther and farther away from the X's and O's because of all the other things that now the job. Yeah. And I mean, you're you're a little bit GM, you're a little bit you know roster management. All those things have become a huge priority. Salary cap guy, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, as a head football coach, you know, you're in that role because of 
your ability to coach and your ability to lead and develop. And all of a sudden when you get in that role, that sometimes you feel like that's the last thing you get yeah. a chance to do. Well, let's talk about your ship then, your little ship that you're guiding. Yep. Coach, what about your room? Tell us about your guys, what you see during spring, what maybe uh, some pieces you might need to add. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about where we're at. I, I, we, we have continued to improve. Uh, I, on, I can confidently say we're better. But I told our kids this, that better doesn't mean we're good. It just means that we, we've continued to improve. Uh, our three veterans, I, I think, you know, Eric, Mason, and Easton have, have been the three that have stuck out and have probably have made the most plays for us over the course of spring. Uh, we need to continue to lead on those guys for leadership, uh, for execution, for their energy. They, 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 need to, they need to bring someone with them as they, as they continue to strive to, to be a good defense in, in 2024. Uh, we need to find ways to continue to use Eric Gentry. Uh, I said it the other day, he's a little bit of a, he's atypical, 6'6", uh, six, six, yeah. 220-pound linebacker, but we got to find ways. Uh, we, we've lined him up on the LOS. He's been off the ball. He's ran the deep middle run through and some versions of, ta you know, different coverages. And so um, finding ways to get him on the field along with the two others, uh, you know, will be a challenge for us. But I think, you know, there's going to be enough sub packages during the year that we'll be able to do that. You mentioned the brand of SC being an attractive component to, to why you came here, but a guy like yourself in a position where you had options, you're, you're also somewhat taking a, taking a chance on Coach Riley and Coach Lynn in terms of attaching yourselves to them mm -hmm. as a strategic chess move, for lack of a better term, uh, as you look at your career. What about those guys really stuck out to you as, hey, I want to I I, I link up with those guys and, right. and grow together? Well, you know, I, I did my own due diligence, uh, just like Coach Riley and Coach Lynn probably vetted me during the process. I, v I vetted them as well. And so I, I know Coach Riley has, is close friends with some other head coaches that, that I've worked with. Uh, I know Coach Lynn has worked with some people in the NFL that are close to me. And so, you know, I, I think our vision, the things that are important in the developmental, you know, I, I still... I'm a developmental coach. Uh, you know, regardless, we're going to recruit five stars. We're going to get some really good players here. They also need to continue to be developed and improved. And I felt like that was the, the, the basis for this program. We want to continue to recruit the be very best high school players we can and, and mix in maybe some, some portal kids or some transfers. But, you know, and if we can do that, then I think we can sustain success here. And um, I, I it's been great. Yeah, I've been here for three and a half months. It's been a blast. Uh, I'd be lying to you if, if I didn't say it's it's much warmer here than it would be in Fargo, North Dakota <laughs> at this time. Today. Yep. You know, you led me right into my next question because because when I look at this staff, it seems like we have targeted coaches that can develop talent. Mm -hmm. But everything we see in this college football world and college athletics landscape is everyone's on a one year kind of deal. How hard is it to sort of match those two things up? Do you need to find the right kids that are willing to buy in for two, three, four years, or do you really feel like you can you can affect a kid and change a kid in in you know nine months? Well, I I, I, I think you need to find the right fit. I mean that that's regardless. Uh, chasing stars is going to lead to disappointment at times. You, you, one of the things that that I know on the defensive side of the ball, we really emphasize through recruiting is having player coach interaction when they step on campus and getting into some deep conversations as far as schematics go. I want to find those kids that are intrinsically motivated that love football because then I know that they're going to want to be developed versus a kid that just likes to compete. I don't know if that's necessarily what you're looking for. You want people that love the game and see that there's, there's a process attached to it. Um, if they are res a result oriented person, it's going to be they're probably going to fall into the boat like you talked about looking for the looking for the easiest way to get on the football field but you you go through that process and and what we're doing right now recruiting you know putting guys in meeting rooms with coach Lynn or position coach and really drilling them to see what they know and how they learn and 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 what motivates them i think we're going to find that we're going to get the right kids that who knows where their ceiling is? Coach, I'm getting a lot of intensity out of the defensive staff. I'm hearing you now talk. I can feel the passion. We had Coach Henderson last week. We got a we know Coach Nua brings the passion. On that practice field, who's the loudest dog out there, Coach? I want to know who's, who's out there barking at the guys that loud. Who's chasing them down? Who's that coach? It, I think it varies. I think Coach Nua is, is consistently the one. <laughs> um, you know, but I think everyone has their, mo has their moments to – uh, get after one another. I know there's times when we're in some, you know, 11 on 11. 
I'll jump right in and get after the D-line. And, and, and it's not my group, yeah. but again, if they know that everyone's committed to seeing them have success, then I, I think you, you create that that buy-in, that continuity, that cohesiveness. Oh, wait, Coach Inch is watching too. I got to. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and, and vice versa. If, if, if Coach Henny or Coach Nua said something to a back, good. I mean, I don't want kids thinking that no one's paying attention. We got a lot of eyes on them. We got great coaches, and it's a it's a tremendous staff. And like I said, everyone's humble enough to say when they're wrong or when we got to improve here or there from day to day. And it's it that's fun to see. Well, you got us fired up, Coach. We are excited to see what you guys do uh, with this defense and this team as a whole. The spring game is a great opportunity to take a look at the Trojans, April 20, a noon kickoff at the Coliseum. So uh, make sure that you are in the house for that one. When you've got good beer and good vibes, it's all Buena. Stone Buena Vez, Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired and imported from San Diego, located near you at findoutstonebrewing.com. All right, as promised, our football roundtable is coming up next with Keely Orr. Blue, 42. Give me the energy to catch the ball, to blow by the defense, to crush 